Good afternoon. afternoon. And welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Parish as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. The first of God's commandments reaches beyond simply not offering sacrifices to pagan deities. Rather, it includes avoiding anything that we rank above God or that prevents us from worshiping him. The importance of this commandment is seen in the way Jesus reacts against those who have made commerce, the selling of animals and changing money, their gods, their idols. Please rise as we begin our celebration in sacred silence. Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves for this most holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. In repentance, let us kneel and ask God's pardon and mercy. Jesus, you suffered death on the cross, bringing us redemption and new life. Christ Jesus, you alone are the power and wisdom of God. Jesus, you strengthen us in our weakness. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Please rise. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation. But bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor his fe male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Keep me safe, O oh God, I take refuge. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their, turned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take this out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. In a religion class, the teacher asked the first graders, Where is God now? One of the boys said, He is in heaven. And one of the girls said, He is in my heart. 
And another boy in the class said, he is in my bathroom. The teacher was startled. And then she asked this boy, how do you know that? Well, every morning, my dad bangs the bathroom door and says, Jesus Christ, you are still in the bathroom. I know how it goes on in the families, you know, we all know that. But my dear brothers and sisters, this may be just a joke, and it happens in our families, you know, sometimes, you know, when the bathroom is occupied, that's all. But the thing is this, the message is this, how easy it is for us to, be, to break God's commandments. Just the choice of words here, the dad broke the commandment of the Lord. We heard in the first reading, among all the commandments, one of that is, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. Sometimes we believe, you know, when it comes to commandments, I'm not committing big sins, no big mortal sins. It happens in everyday life for us. And we all love our freedoms. And therefore, every one of us has a freedom to choose. But the thing that is important for us to remember is this, but we do not have the freedom to choose the consequences of our choices. And what does it mean? For example, we are free to touch fire, but we are not free to choose whether it burns or not. That's what it is. When we break the commandments of the Lord, when we commit sin, when we make wrong choices, we got to bear the consequences. That's what it means. This concept of freedom for choices and no freedom for consequences seems straightforward for us to understand. Yet in today's culture, there is a skewed sense of freedom. We forget we are redeemed people, rescued from the grips of death by our God, who has literally chased us down to, to bring us back to him. It is his doing, his initiative, his love for us. But this skewed sense of freedom leads to some misunderstanding about the Ten Commandments we heard in the first reading. We might sometimes even ask, are they just random rules for, from ancient times meant to give us a guilt trip? Are they still applicable today? Couldn't we bend some of them to speak to the modern day society? These are the questions sometimes go on in our minds. Although we may not be able to say it outwardly, but still, sometimes these thoughts go on in our minds. But my dear brothers and sisters, I invite your attention to this one fact. When we read closely the readings of today, we see a different but a great love message. A message of father or a parent who is madly in, the, in love with their children. That's why the first reading begins not with an admonition, but with a reminder of love. And this is what the Lord says, I, the Lord, am your God who brought you out of Egypt. 
from slavery. Even before all these, he gave all these commandments, he loved us first. He freed them from their slavery, gave them freedom. Even before the commandments are given, he loved them so dearly. And so, it is very important for us to understand the Ten Commandments against this background of God's immense love for us. What we need to really understand is this, that God does, uh, does not set out a long list of rules to control or to limit their freedom. Rather, after bringing them to freedom, he showed them the way to stay within the boundaries of their freedom. It is not so much to control us that God had given these commandments so that we may enjoy. He has given us these commandments that we truly enjoy the freedom of the children of God. Stay and live our lives in the safe boundaries of the freedom that God has given us. And that is exactly the reason, just like any loving parent would do to their children. They are the commandments, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not so much about do's and don'ts, controls and freedom. It's not that. What flows in those commandments is God's immense love for us and ultimately our way into heaven. That is what we got to understand, especially when we think about the commandments. That's why the way of the Ten Commandments is nothing but a love story of God who wants to do everything possible to bring us back to him. That is because he knows our human weakness. And he wants to guide us as a loving parent to the way that will make us live a morally upright life. In the modern day's culture, my dear brothers and sisters, we have this false sense of freedom. But God is calling us to himself. We have a choice to choose to follow him or not. But let us remember, we do not have freedom to choose the consequences of our choice. Although God is merciful, God is loving, God is more than willing to free us, God, God is more than willing to forgive us, but then, if we are not able to surrender to him, open our hearts to him, be honest with him, and express our sinfulness to him, give our sins to him, ask him in contrition for our forgiveness, we are not going to escape the consequences of sin, my dear brothers and sisters. That's what we need to understand it very clearly in our lives. That's why St. Augustine, we all know his life story. He went about everywhere, seeking all kinds of pleasures in the world. Finally, he comes back and then says, when he comes back to the Lord, one of the confessions that he makes is this. Our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Which means, unless we choose to follow the Lord, enjoy the freedom of the children of God, live, in, live within the boundaries that are set by God, we are going to be restless we will not find rest in our lives. But then, when we break the commandments, when we fall into sin, are we left to ourselves to redeem ourselves? 
No. God is still walking with us. And the gospel reading gives us that hope where Jesus cleanses the temple of Jerusalem, all the clutter that was there. Jesus is going to do the same to us. Just like the Jerusalem temple, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. This, this, these temples can become dirty because of our wrong choices. But Jesus is more than willing to cleanse us. And we know where that cleansing can take place in the sacrament of reconciliation. That's why church, during this season of Lent, highly encourages all of us to approach this healing sacrament of reconciliation. No matter what, my dear brothers and sisters, God is ever willing to forgive us. He will never, ever desert us. There's a beautiful story in the life of St. Jerome. He is one of the great saints because, you know, he was the one who translated Bible from Hebrew to Latin. One day he had a great vision. He was in ecstasy. He was so happy that God appeared to him. And that's when he said, Lord, I want to give you all my intelligence, all my energy, all my time, even my life. Jesus said, I do not need all of that. Then Jerems asked Jesus, then what do you want me to give you, Lord? Jesus said, give me all your sins. My dear brothers and sisters, we have the Ten Commandments in the first reading. And then we have cleansing of the temple in the Gospel reading. The message is very clear. If we have broken these commandments, Jesus willing, is willing to cleanse us. But the choice that we need to make is ours. Have we made that choice during this season of Lent? Are we going to make that choice in the days to come? Or are we going to make that choice right now, here during this Holy Eucharist, when Jesus come, comes into our hearts because we are his temple, so that his presence and his grace may go with us bringing us forgiveness and leading us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our needs and needs of the whole world before our merciful Father. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen her teaching in God's law in spirit and truth. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they might work toward a, a common good of all, so that those who live on the margins of society are given assistance and support. 
Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may the Lord bless us in our Lenten journey as we consider our gift to the bishop's appeal. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week, especially Edward Stadmiller, Peter Wren, and for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs within our prayer boxes, the needs expressed through the prayer chain, and for those held within the silence of our heart. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, including those for the repose of the soul of Mike Drager. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying the prayer to good Saint Joseph found in your order of worship. Good Saint Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, Watch, Watch over, over our, our families. families. Help, Help our, our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, Watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raised Jesus the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing role as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and to believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will Stay.
Those of you celebrating your wedding anniversary this month, please stand for the blessing. One less thing to do for the weekend. <laughs> the announcements for this week. Please join us for the sung evening prayer and benediction at Sacred Heart Church tomorrow at 6 p.m. It will be live streamed on our Facebook page and available on YouTube channel. Confessions will be heard in the sacristy from 5.15 p.m. until the time of the evening prayer. There is still time to take part in the rice bowl program. Bowls are available at the entrances of the church. You know, they are available both here and at the back at the, all the entrances. And you, we all know, because we do it every year, how important it is to feed the starving children and to feed those children that really need nourishment. The collection and the collection, this collection and collection for Bella Medical are the two main almsgiving programs that are taking place this Lent. Please extend your generosity. On behalf of our parish and myself, I am glad to extend congratulations to high school boys basketball team of Lourdes for winning state championship. It is really a great achievement in the history of Lourdes and also a gift of gratitude to Our Lady of Lourdes. It was such an exciting victory to watch the winning shot at the buzzer. That was really amazing. So congratulations to all the team, and let us say that we are really proud of these boys. Thank you, and God bless you. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in, myth, in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.